Welcome to Lemons.com in our lab video series on MPLS. You can find a complete list of MPLS video on our website by clicking on the link above and sign up for our newsletters to receive the latest video updates. Over the next few videos, we're going to be looking at MPLS traffic engineering. So first, let's talk a little bit about MPLS TE. What MPLS TE allows you to do is to break away from using routing table to route traffic, but instead you'll be able to have a little bit more freedom to route your MPLS traffic whichever way you like. Whether you want to fix the path so the traffic only go across certain path or allow the protocol to dynamically figure out the path based on certain path constraints. One main difference when you compare the MPLS TE to the regular MPLS is the way that label is distributed since the MPLS TE doesn't really use the LDP or label distribution protocol for the label distribution. As I've mentioned in the previous video, there are three common ways to distribute MPLS labels, and one is to use the LDP, which is pretty much used all the time. Two is via the BGP as part of the route exchange, and this is when you use the command send MPLS label. And three is to use the resource reservation protocol, or RSVP, which is used by MPLS TE. As you will see that RSVP plays a huge role in MPLS TE, as it takes care of the path reservation and making sure things like bandwidth are available for the tunnel end-to-end. -end. But just so that we have the correct understanding, all RSVP does is trying to prevent links from becoming oversubscribed. In other words, it only deals with admission control. It doesn't really deal with the actual enforcement of traffic, so the links can still become oversubscribed if you exceed the reserve tunnel bandwidth or the other non-traffic engineering traffic tries to use the same link as the MPLS traffic engineering tunnel, for example. In this lab, we're going to start with some basic MPLS TE. So first, we're going to look at how the additional links information are carried around the network using the ISIS protocol, although the other options also is the OSPF. Those are the two protocols are supported by MPLS TE. Then we're going to continue with the configuration of basic traffic engineering tunnel just to see what it looks like without getting into the too much detail, which we will do in uh, future videos. And then we will look at how the tunnel gets established through the RSVP protocols using a packet capture. Now for our physical network topology, we have eight routers, R1 through R8 and one switch switch one, although we're not really going to be using uh, router R8 or switch one to route any traffic in this lab. And to compare with our previous lab videos, here in the middle, now we have a true full mesh point to point link. And if you've watched our previous video, you might remember that the, the link between the R2 and R3 didn't exist back then. And now we have to add that just to give us more uh, link variety to route traffic. Now moving down to our layer 3 topology, you can see how we took the router R8 and switch run of the picture. Here in the middle, we have our core MPLS. And so far, we just have the basic MPLS configuration with LDP enabled between router one through uh, R1 through R5. And we're currently having a, the whole network running off of the SAS protocols with a flat layer 2, and this is their net ID for this configure on each of these routers, X being the router number. And we're also going to be using our router R6 and our R7 as our test routers. You can see that we are currently advertising their loopback 10 through 12 on both of those routers, so those are going to be our test subnet. Now let's go ahead and start with our configuration task number one with ISIS uh, traffic engineering. Here we need to configure ISIS on router R1, R2, R3, R4, and R5 to support MPLS TE. We need to use the loopback zero for the router ID. We need to make sure that these routers are still learning routes from the router R6 and R7. And we're not allowing any kind of configuration on the R6 and R7. Okay, so with ISIS or even OSPF, they're both at link state protocol. So what it needs is a complete pictures of the whole network in order to make the routing decisions. And now that with the MPLS TE, there's additional information that needs to be distributed across the network. And those are things like bandwidth. And there's also other LSP attributes, priorities, and all that that we're going to talk about later in the later videos. So in order for those additional information to be carried around the network, the protocol has to be extended to support those information. And for OSPF, there's additional LSA types that has been created for that purpose. And the way to enable that for OSPF, I just want to show you the command itself, although we're not going to really using OSPF in this lab. So if you get under the router OSPF, you see that there is a option for MPLS right here. So to make the router support the new LSA type, you go MPLS, 
traffic engineering, first you have to give it a router ID. Okay, so let's give it a loopback zero, and then you have to specify the area. So let's assume we're dealing with area zero. And that is pretty much all the command that you need to enable uh, MPLS TE for OSPF. Okay, so let me get first get rid of that of those command. Now for the ISIS, the way the ISIS supports the MPLS TE is through the extended TLV, and to enable that, we get under the router ISIS. Now, actually, just to show you what we have configured so far for the ISIS protocol. Right here, we just have the net ID and specify as a level two only area. Okay, so ISIS also has the MPLS options right here with the traffic engineering in particular. And then we have a few more options. First, we have specified the router ID and the task that we use the loopback zero. Okay, then we can specify if you want this to be level one or level two. So here we only have a level two only, but you can see once you, as soon as you enter that command, there's a warning message that came back and said that you must enable the Y metrics, which is what required to support MPLS TE for the level two before you can enable the level two command. Okay, so to do that, you adjust the metric style. So if you do the metric style command, so we have two options here narrow and Y, but for the third option is when you're trying to convert, or when you're in transition state, we try to convert a narrow type or style to a wide, because the two styles are pretty much incompatible. If one router talks or using narrow and the other one using Y style, they would not be able to exchange routes or routing information. Okay, so if your network is gonna be operating using both styles, you're gonna need the transition option, which is to send and accept both styles. And that's exactly what we are dealing with here since, let's go back to our diagram, we're going to be having our router R6 and R7s so that we're not going to be touching as far as configuration, still using the narrow metric style. So here for the metric style for a router R1, it has to be transition. So for that to continue sending the narrow metric style, and then we specify it's going to be a level two only. Okay, then just do up arrow and then go back and specify the MPLS traffic engineering for level two. Okay, so now we have to go around all of our five routers and make that similar changes. So let me just gonna look up that and copy and paste. Okay, so let me copy those. Let me kind of bring up a notepad real quick. Come up with a quick template. We'll copy and then we'll jump over to R2. Paste. And then R3. Uh, R4. And R5. Okay. And just to make sure that the R6 and R7 is still communicating with the rest of the network, we can do just do a quick check of the show IP route ISIS and make sure that R1 is still learning the routes to R6 and R7. And just hop over to R6 real quick. Do show IP route ISIS and make sure that R6 is also learning the routes from the rest of the network. All right, and now if you go to R1 and do a quick show ISIS, they, there's a MPLS option and traffic engineering. You can look at the advertisement. Right now, we don't really have the output of, from that command because we haven't really enabled traffic engineering on the router. We just modified the routing protocol to support the MPLS TE. All right, so that should complete our task number one.